everyone. Um, welcome, and uh, this is going to be a little look at first look at LightWave 10. And you might think, well, LightWave 10's been out for quite a while, but we just now got it here at work not too long ago, so I hadn't had a chance to play with it too much until now. So I wanted to kind of just you know give you an overview of some of the new features in it. I'm just going to cover a few of the main ones, and uh, you can go onto the website and stuff and find some of the others. But uh, if you're looking into upgrading, then the the biggest thing that would cause you to upgrade would be this. Under the um, view modes, you now have VPR under the view mode. It used to be its own little window. But now this is just like the um, uh, F Prime plugin that they used to have. So basically, F Prime was a, about a $500 plugin. And basically, this is all built into Lightwave. So uh, as you can see here, if I were to select one of my lights and go in and start messing with it, or just start moving the, the light around you can see everything is updated in real time and you can see even like soft shadows reflections things things like that uh, are updated in real time if I were to select this model here and um, bring up his uh, surface editor I'll select his armor I'll just change his, the color of his armor to blue or something like that now I'll move this now you can see that all these updates are happening as soon as I make them. I just kind of move the slider a little bit to refresh it and uh, so you can really experiment you can go ahead and, and really mess with all the different you know options not just in, in lighting but in the uh, the material editor and also there's apparently according to the new text documentation here a new skin shader node that works with this VPR system and if you've ever done the um, tried to use the skin shaders before you know that there's a lot of trial and error involved in that and uh, so because you have to tweak a few settings render tweak a few settings render this is much 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 better so the VPR real-time preview is, is pretty much worth the price of admission considering the fact that it used to be a $500 plug-in does pretty much the same thing <clears throat> so <clears throat> the other thing is if I go back to my shaded view I can also see now in my shaded view <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I can see the uh, depth of field and the motion blur preview. So I can go ahead and I can see what the uh, what the motion blur is going to look like in in the viewport right here. I mean that that's really fantastic. I can see okay, you know, is this enough motion blur? Is this too much? And uh, so that's really a nice feature. So basically the enhancements to, and as you can see, even with my screen capture software going on, that and, let's see here, let's go back to the uh, to the VPR setup. But you don't get the uh, motion blur in the VPR, you get one or the other. You can go into shaded mode and turn on the uh, motion blur, but at least you get the preview of it. So <clears throat> sometimes, you know, if you're not doing a lot of motion blur stuff or, or whatnot, you might be able to just get away with what you see in the... Uh, the viewport here with the VPR on so you could just go ahead and it's almost like semi real-time rendering there so you could at least go through and uh, save a bunch of frames of this and uh, at least get a nice shaded preview uh, textured preview of, of what you got here so that is uh, that is one of the nice features there so basically like I was saying what used to be almost a $500 plugin is now s sort of built in and enhanced all right, the next thing is, uh, let me load in an object here. Very simple test object, just a little, like, box. And if you've seen my other tutorials, you know that I like to animate in Blender and bring that animation into Lightwave later on to render it. So uh, they've made enhancements to the MDD format import. So if we go into the Deform tab under Add Displacement, there's a new thing called MD Reader. You double-click on that. We load our MDD file, which is nothing really. It's just a simple uh, the cube kind of curling up on itself. But before there were a lot of limitations. Once you loaded it in here, that was it. You know, th this object was stuck in the world. If you tried to move it, for example, it wouldn't move. But uh, now you have a lot of different options. Uh, for one thing, you you can change the playback. You know, you can change the speed of the playback. I'll change this to 200%. So now you can see that it's it's playing back much faster. And then also, if I want to move this object around inside of layout, 
I can change the cache from world space to object space and now you can see that I can actually and go ahead and animate the object further so let's say I animated like a, a flying cycle or a walk cycle in blender brought in here then I would go ahead and, and be able to still animate the uh, object wherever I wanted to in layout so that is really uh, quite a nice thing and of course you've got loop uh, I think that's composite or something and, and ping pong uh, and the um, speed with which it animates as you can see here so that is really really a nice thing uh, the enhancements they have made to that and let me clear the scene now uh, here's some of the stuff that not oh let me before I start going into the bad stuff uh, I'll show you one more thing that works pretty well if you go and hit D to bring up your display preferences or O to bring up your general preferences uh, there's a new tab over here it says uh, navigation and as you can see the 3d mouse I think I showed you before stuff about the 3d mouse 3d mouse support is built in and it's nice because it has different styles of you know manipulating things with the mouse alright and you can manipulate items with the mouse as well like this light for example alright so uh, the 3D mouse is, is quite nice. And the other thing, which unfortunately, hopefully they'll keep at, because uh, it would be nice if this feature could work consistently, uh, FBX import support. Uh, let's go ahead and just say load items from scene. And here's some FBX files that were created in Unity, or not in, but for a game in Unity. Not by me, but they're just, um, you know, uh, these things should work because you know these are FBX files that were created you know using professional software and I know that they look great inside of Unity and other programs so when we load it into Lightwave the, um, the good thing though is you can just load items from scene you don't have to worry about the weird funky plugins that they used to have before that were not consistent and you know the FBX plugins were written by you know various and sundry people you know, no, no slam against them, but they just weren't consistent, and their options were very convoluted. Here, you just load this just like you would load any lightwave scene. But as you can see here, there are still issues. Um, if we go ahead and, and scrub through the animation, you can see that the animation is there, everything's right, but some of the uh, bones uh, will not uh, come in correctly. It depends on the scene. Some of the stuff, of course, the sample scenes that come with Lightwave work fantastic. Uh, everything else I've tried, not so much. But uh, hopefully this will get working because the FBX files, if you want to import light uh, animation, you can see that, for one thing, the bones are still here. So you can you, you can mess with the bones if you needed to. Also, you know, the FBX files are much, much smaller than the MDD files. If you have a long animation, the MDD files can, in fact, uh, actually bring your system to its knees because they can run into the hundreds of megabytes uh, of data. So that's uh, something to, uh, to, to think about. <clears throat> some of the other enhancements I'm just going to kind of touch on. Uh, we've got some stereoscopic options here. The linear workflow, which basically means that it, it kind of compensates for the fact that you know Mac and PC in, in different displays uh, have different levels of brightness. So basically it, it will make it so that uh, the color that you pick and the brightness of the colors that you pick, you know, are consistent across any kind of monitor and whatnot. Uh, the MDD, the FBX, uh, the Colada. I tried the Colada stuff, and the Colada stuff does not seem to work at all, really. So I, I would I would kind of give up on that. And the other stuff I haven't really messed with too much. Uh, also, the Sprite Gen I haven't tried yet, but I know the Sprite Gen basically will render out all of your, the frames of your animation if we were you know if we were doing this as an animation for a 2d game it would render all the frames out and put them on to uh, lay them out on one image so that you don't have to go into some photo editing program and do that later with, which is nice if you're doing 2d games so uh, that's a first look at lightwave 10 uh, there will probably be more stuff coming up later but uh, they, you know that's a first look and hopefully uh, that gives you enough knowledge that you need to know as to whether you want to upgrade or not.